a greater or lesser extent, we, along with all other living creatures, are exposed to pathogenic organisms. Some are relatively harmless, but others can be fatal. In this module, we'll be looking at the safe handling and containment of biohazards, from those causing mild infections to potentially deadly infectious organisms. The impact of some pathogenic organisms on human and animal health, as well as the environment, can be devastating. So it's essential that they can be contained in safe and secure facilities, facilities designed to cope with the potential level of threat. Biosafety is an international issue and high on the agenda of the World Health Organization, who provide guidance on the groupings of microbes according to their risk or hazard level. They've identified four risk groups. These risk groups translate directly into the four levels of biosafety and the containment facilities designed for specific research into various pathogenic viruses and organisms. The levels of containment range from the lowest, biosafety level 1, to the highest at level 4. When working with Newcastle disease viruses and most avian influenza, you are required to work at biosafety level 3 plus, which in the UK equates to working at SAPO level 4 or ACDP level 2. Extra precautions are needed for working with some specified influenza viruses. It's recommended that these should be worked with at ACDP level 3. Remember, you must comply with your country's legislation and your institute's risk assessments when working with any avian influenza or Newcastle disease viruses. So, what are the procedures working practices and facilities required when handling materials in each of the risk groups. Biosafety level 1 laboratories are appropriate for work that is of little risk to laboratory personnel and the environment. Precautions when working with biohazardous materials at this level will involve wearing some sort of hand protection and might involve wearing facial protection. Work surfaces must be impervious to water, easy to clean and resistant to acids, alkalis and other chemicals. The laboratory will not necessarily be separated from the rest of the building and the work is generally conducted on open bench tops using good laboratory practices. Decontamination procedures for this level are similar in most respects to modern precautions against everyday microorganisms. Although similar to level 1, biosafety level 2 involves working with microbes of moderate potential risk to laboratory personnel and the environment. It includes various bacteria and viruses that can cause animal disease. The containment measures for biosafety level 2 include authorised access only to the laboratory, efficient vector control, safe storage of biological agents and the use of biological safety cabinets or isolators when handling infectious material that may produce aerosols or splashes. Biosafety level 3 involves working with various bacteria and viruses that can cause severe to fatal disease in animals and humans, but for which vaccines or other treatments may exist. They include virulent Newcastle disease virus and notifiable avian influenza. Laboratory personnel working at this level must have specific training in handling pathogenic and potentially lethal agents and be assessed as competent to work with these agents. Dealing with biological hazards at biosafety level 3 often requires the use of highly sophisticated personal protective equipment. Biosafety level 4 is required for work with highly dangerous pathogens that pose a high risk of laboratory infections. 
They can cause severe to fatal disease in animals and humans, are likely to spread to the community and are pathogens for which vaccines or other treatments are not available. Hence the need for a safe and secure biolab when handling these agents. The facility itself should be completely self-contained, either housed in its own building or set well apart from other working areas. It will house its own biological safety cabinets and other specialist equipment and have an incinerator on site for the disposal of animal carcasses. Entry to and exit from the lab is strictly controlled. Access is key activated. Any person entering the lab must be authorised and security cleared. The entry and exit antechambers provide showers and other safety precautions designed to destroy all traces of any biohazard. The air and water systems going into and out of the lab are strictly controlled. Outgoing water and air undergo decontamination procedures to eliminate any possibility of an accidental release. What precautions are taken to protect the environment against pathogenic release? The building is under strict environmental control. Everything that enters and leaves the building is restricted. So this includes the waste, the people, the air, and this tight control ensure that the, the environment is protected. What type of work is undertaken in Biosafety Level 3? Any type of work, uh, but it's all with live pathogen. And in our case, the live pathogen that we're working with are live viruses that have been identified as um, notifiable viruses, but also uncharacterized viruses or um, clinical material from potential outbreak cases. So um, this work is specifically uh, undertaken at this level of containment um, following our country's legislation. Can samples be taken out of biosafety level three? Yes, they can, but only by using approved method. For example, material must be activated by a validating me method before exiting the building, or material can be um, surface decontaminated and it can only be reopened in a facility with the same level of containment. At levels three and four, laboratory scientists must be qualified, trained and experienced in the handling of extremely hazardous infectious agents. They must have a thorough understanding of the containment procedures and the equipment they will be using. In addition to the containment measures set out in levels 1 and 2, a biosafe laboratory for levels 3 and 4 will also include the following features. At level 3, with extra precautions, exhaust air is double filtered. At level 4, input air and extract air is twice HEPA filtered. The workplace must be sealable to permit disinfection and be maintained at an air pressure negative to atmosphere. The lab must have an observation window or CCTV so that occupants can be seen. The lab should contain its own equipment for level 4 and as far as is practical for level 3 and shower decontamination of staff. At this level, all of the procedures that involve the handling of infectious organisms or materials must be conducted in biological safety cabinets or other physical containment devices within the contained laboratory. As we've seen, the dangers posed by many pathogenic organisms can be contained thanks to the continuing developments in the area of biosafety and the facilities to provide them.